Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. We've got a boxing unboxing day today, and today's episode is sponsored by our good friends DistroKid. So we'll have a short sponsored message by those guys here in a minute. But first, let's open up this really cool brand new guitar. So this one came from Musician's Friend, as most of my new guitars do. But I do work with a few other dealers, sometimes out of necessity, because you never know what dealer is going to have like a limited edition something exclusive to them. But this is something brand new from... Looks like Fender. I was actually uh, talking about this particular guitar not too long ago, where I'm kind of late to the party on this one. I'm not sure if I didn't place my pre-order in advance enough to, you know, get the first run, but it appears we at least have the second run right here. Let's go ahead and see what is in this. Nice! Another one of those green cases. It caught me off guard that first time, but now I just expect it. And something that I find really cool is that even though this is a limited edition case, it appears you can buy them separately. So if you're interested in one of these cases, I can actually help you get a slightly better deal on one of those too. Apparently Fender's also making a blue one. That's pretty sweet. I hope I get one of those in the future. But if it comes with a mint green case stock, you know what this is coming from. This is the Parallel Universe version two. So we did the Maverick Dorado. That was a cool freaky guitar. That was a reissue of something that Fender hasn't done in a long time. But what is inside this one? Okay, so I was not expecting the sparkle finish. And, um, <laughs> apparently this, this either fell out of the neck rest during shipping, which I guess is a possibility, it depends, or somebody just packed it wrong. But honestly, it almost seems more secure if you pack it incorrectly. <laughs> This is actually looking a lot sweeter in person. So I was not expecting the sparkle finish and I think that's what really sells it. I was a little bit scared because I had pre-ordered this because in the NAM photos, it looked like it had white pin striping along the edges. And that made me fall in love with this thing. And then when I found out that was just a uh, reflecting light, I'll be honest, it kind of made me really sad. It almost made me want to cancel my order. I mean, had I not been buying it just to review and demo and then move on to its next home, I probably would have. But I really enjoyed my Jazzmaster Telecaster mashup. So now that we have it in Stratocaster form with, you know, some other cool stuff here, I'm I'm actually really happy about this. That looks pretty cool. So this will likely be uh, Fender Friday this week. But now a word from our sponsor. Previously on the Trogley's Guitar Show. DistroKid, a place for you to upload your music on all the major platforms. Let's go ahead and upload my very famous Good Day song. Yeah, that's looking good. Now I finally understand how people do all these copyright claims. We'll now be instantly famous! How did I do? Yeah, I, I don't think singing songwriting is quite my forte. I'll stick to YouTube, thank you. But if you're a better singer-songwriter than I am and you need to get your music out here, DistroKid is the easiest way to do it. All you do, you sign up for their website, you basically upload it, fill in a few forms, and you're good to go. They get it to all these different platforms. I mean, take a look at my song. It is now officially published everywhere. I mean, you could ask your Alexa to play Good Day and she will. That was super fascinating to me, but DistroKid sponsored this episode because they wanted me to tell you guys about a few new features, such as you can now upload synced lyrics to your songs with DistroKid, and you can now even get your music on TikTok, which is a huge growing social media platform. So that'll definitely be great for exposure. And apparently even Facebook and Instagram are building their own music catalogs, and DistroKid can also help you get your foot in the door there. So these are all emerging markets. Maybe Good Day still has a chance. <laughs> So if you have a song that you would like to publish for the world to see and purchase, go ahead and check out DistroKid. You can use my VIP link in the description to save yourself 7% on any plan. So good luck to you, and thank you DistroKid for sponsoring this episode. So definitely check out their service if you're interested in publishing your own music, because it really is pretty simple and easy to use. But now a fan sent me an electric guitar. I don't really have like a public PO box at this point in time. Uh, I guess it's something I could look into if some if people want to send me stuff, but <laughs> I don't know how I feel about receiving a bunch of stuff. Because I buy so much, it kind of makes an unboxing segment of its own, but I guess we could do like a fan mail segment if you guys really wanted to. 
But this is an authentic Gibson authorized partner Axe Heaven miniature guitar. That's kind of cool. It's like an Explorer case. I guess some flying V's could potentially come in a case like this as well. If I can figure out how to open it without destroying it, that would be nice. There we go. Looks like we have some sort of a gold top. Oh, and it even comes with a stand. <laughs> Interesting. So they actually have, you know, some features really good on this and other features not so much. So what, what are the good features? They kind of have like a 54 Les Paul styled headstock with the Gibson logo slightly lower. It legitimately does say Les Paul model. So that actually looks pretty good. Your truss rod's a little bit crooked, but you know, sometimes that's right. The nut is super unrealistic though. That's super tall. And they've got the neck joint of a Les Paul Jr. here. So that's not quite right. They need to shave that down a little bit. Oh no, and they have the neck pickup ring backwards. <laughs> it needs to slope the other way. And man, that ABR1 bridge is way too low. That's gonna cause some issues if you ever need to lower your action because it's already ridiculously low. And man, those back plates are sticking up. Those should be flush. <laughs> oh, these collectible miniature guitars. Thank you for sending this in. I'm, I'm sure I'll hang it up somewhere in here. That's the one thing that's always really bothered me about like these miniature collectible guitars that are just meant for slight display purposes is usually they're so badly proportioned they don't look anything like it's supposed to be. But sometimes that's all by design because they don't want to be sued. But from far away, it looks pretty good if you like gold tops. Cool, now let's move on to a couple other things. Well, let's kind of unbox these together and then we'll get to this last guitar. So this is just a, a purchase I made for the channel because look at my pitiful second tripod stand. I'm pretty new to the whole multi-camera angles thing. So I never had more than one tripod. And the reason why it took me so long to uh, get another one is simply because I thought about upgrading to one of the uh, nicer tripods like that's a $50 tripod or so you can get them all the way up to a thousand bucks they do a bunch of other different stuff besides just hold your camera so I was thinking about something like that but I can never make up my mind because I don't really know what I'm buying so I just picked this one up off of Amazon it's like Amazon basics I think it's like 25 bucks this will do okay for just sitting right there forever oh that's cool that's interesting I was expecting this to be like pretty basic but honestly it looks pretty good for the price cool so we'll see that next time i think the true irony of this is this is what a 200 dollar guitar stand with a box so it costs way more than a proper tripod and i'm just risking that camera so that'll definitely be a worthy investment for the channel and this is actually a teespring item I was running out of t-shirts. This is the tri-blend that I send if you guys are interested. I personally like the tri-blend a lot better than the $6 cheaper one because the Trogli's logo appears to wear off of those quicker and I just like the fabric of this. So you, you can check those out on Teespring if you want. So this is a new Guitar Day purchase that unfortunately we're not going to get to review because I do allow the option. If you don't want me to review the guitar, I can either have it sent directly to you or depending on the situation, sometimes it has to come to me first and then it gets sent on to you. But this is me unboxing a brand that I've never unboxed before, except for in that last episode when I told you that exact same story. <laughs> So when I unboxed that Rickenbacker, I started questioning, are all Rickenbackers tiny? No, they're not. That just happens to be a three quarter scale instrument. And I would have loved to have the opportunity to review this one, but I just didn't have enough time. But our case is completely different this time. That's cool. Let's go ahead and see what is in here. That last Rickenbacker case had that like sparkly silver case. I thought that was pretty cool. This is more so basic, but then again, this guitar is about a thousand dollars cheaper. So, uh, what model Rick do we have in here? This is the part where I tell you what model it is, but I don't know enough about Rickenbackers to tell you. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's some sort of full-size six string. Yeah, that's that's what I was expecting here. 
Interesting that we have fingerprints right out of the box. But here's a full-size Rickenbacker. Pretty similar design, but this one's semi-hollow like you're used to seeing. I like their stylized F-holes, I just wish they had a little bit of binding, and that's an interesting pickup. It's like the toasters, but it also has built-in flamethrowers. I do know this is the Jet Glow finish. That's their fancy term for a black guitar, apparently. Let's go ahead and uh, give it a quick strum here. Basically the story behind this one is he saw that I purchased a Rickenbacker for someone else through my new Guitar Day program and he just wanted to get one of these so he messaged me and said, can, can I get it but not wait the three to six plus weeks for you to review it because I'm a little bit impatient, I want this guitar. So I completely understand, I, I wouldn't really have much to say about this guitar anyways besides just reacting to its, you know, first impressions and what I think about it because I really do not know that much about Rickenbacker history. But man, black guitars are hard to keep perfect. I like the way that they uh, they carve the body away right here. I can't wait to take a look at the inside of that other one because these guitars, I don't know, they just don't feel like wood when they're all painted black. They kind of feel plasticky. But maybe another day we'll get to take a closer look at one of these. So we need to go ahead and get this guy packed up and then pack up some more stuff. Oh boy, now we've got a bunch of stuff to pack up today. It seems, you know, every Monday I always have to pack a bunch of stuff up, but I guess today is, I think, Wednesday night, so I'm a little bit delayed this week, I guess. But our first one within here, oh, I think that gives you guys a hint. It's the Silent Siren Telecaster. So, kind of a funny story with this one. Somebody had uh, pre-ordered this waiting for my review, and that was actually somebody up in Canada. I was kind of sad that I sold it though, because once I reviewed this guitar, it was just an absolute phenomenal instrument. Not only does it look cool, but it sounds great as well. And I just had a whole inbox flooded full of people that also wanted to buy this. So uh, he ended up backing out of this guitar. I gave him the option because I did find, you know, that small, very minor yellowing right here. But he actually upgraded to a different Japan exclusive Telecaster that we went ahead and pre-ordered. I'm sure you guys will like watching that one get reviewed, but I had actually already purchased another one for someone else. So that was just going from Japan to him up in Canada. But this one's now going to its next buyer in California. So if you are interested in one of these Silent Siren Telecasters, what I did is I ordered three more of these. I'll get them later on this year. So if you want to place a pre-order so you have your spot reserved, you can do that. You just message me through my new Guitar Day program. Now, obviously you're going to pay a premium because I'm importing them doing all that hard work, but I can get you this Japanese exclusive guitar if you really want it. Now along a very similar vibe, we have to say goodbye to the Silent Siren bass. And when I got this, it was because of that Julia Grooves bass thing. I never did end up learning that song that I liked that she was playing, but I was pleasantly surprised at just how special this little bass guitar actually was. I just thought it was, you know, a special finish, but it turned out to be there are some special specs on this guy too. So I'm super glad that I gave this thing a chance, even though I don't normally do a bunch of bass guitars. But... And just in case you missed it, I announced the winner of the giveaway of the orange little bass thing bass amp. I was initially going to do that on the Tony Franklin fretless bass, but this bass just seemed to be a lot better to demo an amp with. But very cool, let's get it packed up. We had kind of done a mini review on this guitar in the last unboxing episode. It's that Studio Standard. I was just baffled. Have I been wrong about all the Studio Standards up until this point? Because I think this is the first one that I've had where I actually, you know, really take them apart and pay attention to what woods make them up. I know the first two years of Studios are made with all their bodies, but I never realized that some of them don't even have the maple tops. That's kind of cool. It made this guitar even more interesting. But I think I listed this thing around 1 a.m. and it was sold 
sold for full price by 11 a.m. So honestly, I think I'm a little bit behind on the market of these studio standards and studio customs. People really love these things. And once again, it's because the Tim Shaw PAFs, they're really lightweight for a guitar of this era, a little bit thinner, and they just have a cool vintage vibe to them. But if you guys remember correctly, it was shipped to me in a big square box like this. So instead of paying the huge shipping overcharge to ship something like this because it's such a big bulky box, I took the other one, I just sliced it in half, and I was actually able to create a double walled box with it. And it's actually going to be a lot cheaper to send now too. So don't be afraid to resize your boxes. That can actually save you a lot more money than you think. And the last one to pack up today. It was the one I bought just to prove a point that the seller was a little bit confused. He thought it was an 82, it ended up being a 92. I mean, it could have went either way, but most of the specs were saying 92. So I didn't end up doing a full review and demo on this one, simply because I had just talked about a Custom Plus, and this one's not 100% original but it definitely has a nice top to it. But this is how it always seems to go. This thing sat for a month and then I had two people fighting over it at the end. But this one's actually going off to Paris, France. The other guy was offering me, a, it was a really cool brown Les Paul Custom. Maduro brown? I don't know, I've never said that word out loud before. I was actually looking forward to that trade, but this guy ended up coming through with a bank wire transfer because he really wanted this guitar, so. This one has a long way to go to make it to Paris, France. Hopefully there's still flights available. Thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. Don't forget to visit our sponsor if you're interested in their services. Once again, that is DistroKid at distrokid.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.